Drone Prize brought together three teams of enthusiasts from all over the United States for two days of intense competition, learning, and fun. At stake are more than $10,000 worth of amazing prizes from Aerial Technology International and 3D Robotics. Skyward CEO Jonathan Evans conceived of Drone Prize after we did a project with him at the Eugene Fire Department. The technology is empowering, and I wanted to have a way to demonstrate that. And with the regulatory process being what it is, there was really only one vehicle uh, to approach the technology available to us in, in the United States anyway right now. And that is basically that you know an enthusiast or a hobbyist is welcome to fly a radio-controlled aircraft purely for the love of flight. We came up with the idea of showing to the public how drones could be used for social good because there's such a stigma when it comes to drones that they see on the news and drones can be used for a lot more better uses that people may not realize. The first day's event was held at the Cascades Academy, a private school in Central Oregon. We did an outdoor FPV flight demonstration as part of an Aerial Robotics Innovation Day sponsored by the Intel Corporation. Well, it's a fascinating area because it's hobbyists and and research into real-world applications where, where it can maybe transform things like agriculture. Turnout for the event was overwhelming as every session was packed to capacity. This event came about purely and simply because people asked for it. I was getting requests from legislators, I was getting requests from educators, I was getting requests from people who wanted to retrain. When the opportunity came up to hook up with the drone prize and use that as a focal point to show people uh, the diversity of UAVs and the fact that these could be used for social good and because it's such a magnet for kids who are fascinated by aerial robotics, it just seemed like a natural thing to do. To be considered to make the trip to Oregon, teams had to submit a short video showing how they were using drones in partnership with a community group for a good cause. All right, let's go meet the teams. I'm Debbie Blackmore, and we are three chicks in a drone. I'm currently studying GIS and remote sensing at Portland State. I'm in the geography department, the master's program. I met Veronica Megler, she's our data scientist. She knew Pat, who's an environmental scientist. And the three of us talked about drones and the environment and thought, wait, you want to buy a drone? I want to buy a drone. So we went out and bought our own drone and started offering to fly over, especially environmental projects. As a student, I was studying natural resource policy and management and did a paper on the FAA, the recent FAA activity, the formation of ORUAS, which became SOAR Oregon. And as part of that, I stumbled, literally stumbled across the Drone Prize announcement. Um, and I said, wait a minute, we've talked about doing a project. We could do this. Pat did take the lead for us on preparing our video. Uh, two of us were out of the country. So Pat um, coordinated the work with the other people and got the video submitted on time. I'm Chase Fiddler. I'm with Furman University for our uh, Tracking Lights drone prize entry. And I'm William Lewis. I'm at Furman University. I believe it started with Mike Winiski. He is a Earth and Environmental Science professor at Furman. And he had a couple of his students working they were making a map that overlaid the street lights that they had in the neighborhood, whether they were on or off. Our professor, Dr. John Conrad, had been working with a quadrotor technology for at least a year, if not more. Mike Winiski made, I believe, some uh, offhand comment about how nice it would be if they could fly the drone at night and take photos. And Dr. Conrad said, hey, you know what, I think we can do that. I've been interested in quadrotors and Dr. Conrad approached us. We had been working with him on just a couple things for a very long time and he's you know, a great mentor, a great guy to work with. 
My name is Isabel Carson and I go to Grady High School in Atlanta, Georgia. We're all part of the robotics team there called G3 Robotics and basically it started out as a programming and electrical project and so I was appointed as the leader. Um, so I'm Sajada Lee. I joined G3, I, was, or I wanted to work a lot on the mechanical side and I kind of got drawn out into uh, the marketing side of the team. We do a lot of outreach. So um, I'm Gabriel Coopersmith. I am a mechanical engineering member of the robotics team at Grady. So I'm the head pilot and I work with the more mechanical issues of the drones. Our subject is how we can use drones. We're using them with uh, MARTA, which is the Metro Atlanta Rapid Transit Authority. So they're sort of, you know, the buses, the trains around the city. We're getting them integrated with this to make sure that, you know, drones are a byword for safety. Our mentor, Gardner Chambliss, kind of set up a place for us to meet and film it. He pretty much set up the camera and filmed all of it, and I took over the editing, but we all kind of worked together. One, two, three, Team Grady, yeah. The first element of the competition required each team to make a presentation to the business leaders and other professionals who were on hand for the event, with the winner determined by their votes. Debbie Blackmore from Three Chicks and a Drone had a prior commitment and had to leave. But members of Grady Robotics stepped up to help her pre-record her talk. We see the potential for quite a few restoration and conservation projects and we believe that they need affordable oversight. Flying small drones can be very cost effective. Here's a bit of what the team from Furman University had to say. My big surprise was probably the fact that a iPad app actually worked perfectly in sync with uh, the GPS. <laughs> a week before we were planning on doing our flights, this app finally came out after it had been announced for a while. And it took us a while to figure out how to get it to work properly, but once we did, it was seamless. This is some of what the Grady Robotics team told the crowd. Some basic ideas that we came up with, we're using them for surveillance, tactical purposes, and other safety and construction applications. And basically, we just gave them a presentation about drones, their uses, and how we could specifically use them to help them. All right, so tune in next time, and we'll see which team won the Ben Ballot, and we'll go on to have some amazing flying competitions. Hope you're watching. See you next time. All right, fly safe. server is saying go up go up and I'm pressing up and it's not going up and, and then it crashes oh aircraft down